Hey, welcome back YouTube. My name is Mike Swartz. Today, I'm going to add to the Ninja Trader tutorial series and I'm going to show I'm going to share with you guys how I set up my market analyzer window and also why it's important. Now, if you're wondering what a market analyzer window is, it's this window right over here and we're going to set another one up from scratch and you can change things a little bit to, you know, suit your needs. But one of the things that this does for me is I can see the indices right over here. Then I can see commodities that I track, which is going to be crude oil and gold. And you can change that. And I'll show you guys how to do that. Currencies, the euro and the Canadian dollar. And then the bond market. I look at the bonds right here. Now, I do not trade the bonds, but at least I like to look at them to see, you know, when the market's going down, when the market's going up, how are the bonds reacting? If we're seeing a steep sell off in the market or people fleeing into the bonds, this is all great, useful information for me. Then I look at the normal ATR right here. Then I also want to look at the, the average ATR over the last 250 days. And then even more important is how many days until contract rollover. Now, if you do not trade the futures market, then contract rollover is not going to be important to you. But we also want to be able to see, you know, I can look real quick. I can see green. I can see red. So that, that alerts me to what is up and what is down for the day. Now, in order for me to, you know, set this up properly, we have to come right over here to the control window. You may see a control window, one of your other screens, or if you're on a single screen, you'll see this pop up. This has a lot of useful information over on it. But what we're going to do is we're going to go to the new tab and we're going to click on market analyzer, which or I'm sorry, market watch, which is going to be right here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this window right out of the way. Now our goal is I'm going to try to replicate this window over here. So the first thing, oops, it's not market watch I want. What am I thinking? All right, we're going to come right over here to the market analyzer. And I even said market analyzer first. But again, sometimes as you get, you know, talking and whatnot, you can easily make mistakes. So one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this window and I'm going to put add label row. Now on this label row, I can double click it right here and I can change what I want the label to be. So if I want it to be indexes, I can do that and I can click OK. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click left click over here. And I'm just going to type in the first index. Go YM 06-22. All right. Now the next one, I'm going to do this one a little bit different. I'm going to say ES. You might say, well, Mike, I don't know what the, the contract expiration is. What's the current contract? Right over here, I can go to Futures and then just click the ES symbol and it'll put the 0622 in there, which I already knew that. For the next one, just for speed, I'm going to do the same thing. And then to round it out, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to add RTY 06-22. Oops. RTY 06-22. All right, so now I have the indices that I watch. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to right click again and I'm going to put add a label row. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put bonds. I say, Mike, you're, you're splitting everything up. Yeah, I did. And I'm only going to put one more bond in here because I'm not trying to drag this video out and make it, you know, a, a two hour video showing you guys how to set this up. But as long as you can see the labeled rows, we can see the instruments and now we have something we can work with. Now, what's important to me is I don't really need to see the bid and ask for you. Maybe that will be something you want to see. And I'm going to show you how we can customize this to at least get all of these layouts the way in which I have them. So what I'm going to do now is go to right click and I'm going to come right over here to columns. Now from the columns tab, what I'm going to do is for the ask price, I'm going to hit remove for the bid price. I'm going to hit remove and then let's see. Then I'm going to hit apply and now we can see this window. Ah, let me get this out of the way. I'm just going to try to get this some workable space over here. I'm going to put this right over here just so we can kind of you know, compare apples to apples, right? So now you can see all we can see is the instrument in the last price. Well, we need a lot more on our chart than that or on this market analyzer window in my opinion. We're going to come right back over here to columns and I'm going to move this right over here. Now what I want to do is the next one I want to go to is net change. Now what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to click it once. I'm going to click it twice and you can see it added it twice to the box down here. Now, why did I do that? Well, one, I want to see what the net change was in terms of points on the second one. I want to see, oops, I want to see what the net change is in terms of percent. So for the first one, I'm going to come right down here and I'm just going to click in points right there. And on the second one, it should already be 2%. Now let's go ahead and hit apply. 
Now we can see we have net change, net change two. Well, that doesn't make sense to me. I wanna go ahead and change the second one, right, right here, which is, you can see we can highlight right here, which we can change in this box where it says net change two. I'm actually gonna change this to per percent, all right, because that way I know which one is point, which one is percent. Plus we can see, you know, the, <laughs> the markings afterwards, it'll, uh, letting us know that it is a percent. Now we need to add some more things. We need to add ATR and I need to add two ATRs along with the days and total rollover. Then I'm gonna show you guys how we can color those cells conditionally. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna come right back up here and let's go back from scratch, assuming that you guys clicked off that screen. I'm gonna re right click on the screen, come right back over here to columns, remove this over here. And now what I wanna do is I wanna come right over here to where it says indicator, all right? So on indicator right here, I'm gonna double click, oops, I'm gonna double click that, and I double clicked it a few too many times, all right? So right here where it says indicator, it put up the AAA, this is just a test stuff that I had way back when, and we're gonna to go to ATR, where are you at? ATR. All right, let's scroll down, all right, right here, ATR. I'm gonna click on that. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna to go to indicator one more time, double click it where it puts it down here. And again, I'm gonna drop down my list. You see all the algo box indicators I have on my chart. And we're gonna come right here to ATR. All right, so now what we need to do is, I need to configure the ATRs. So I'm gonna click on the first ATR, and I'm gonna look 14 days back. That's the default that I look for. Resolu um, right here where it says type, I wanna actually go to day. So I wanna look, you know, 14 days back. Now, value, I'm gonna keep this at one, but day's the load. I go ahead and load 15, just to make sure I have all 14 days and just I add one more day just to be safe. I'm gonna click apply. And now we should see this ATR should match the same values that I have up here on the, on the upper part of my screen. So we can see that. Now what I wanna do is go to the second ATR indicator. And on this one, I'm actually gonna, I'm actually gonna see if we can find the label for it. Um, actually, before we do that, what we'll do now is instead of minute, we're gonna come right back over here to day, and then I'm gonna leave the value at one. In days, the load, I'm gonna load 251 days, right here where it says period. I'm gonna load 250 days. Again, I'm just loading one more day of data than what it actually calls for in the chart. Now I'm gonna click OK. And let's see, all right, there you go. You can see we have ATR 14, ATR 250, which matches over here. Now, if we want any of these cells bigger or smaller, we can always drag them over, but we need to come back over and add one more important indicator, in my opinion, and that is gonna be days until rollover. That way, we, we already know ahead of time, you know, when does this contract roll over? So right here, double click days until rollover, click OK. Now we can see we have all the fields. Now, if I wanna adjust the field smaller or bigger, I can just drag it right here on the edge and I'll resize all the fields accordingly. Now, days until rollover is very important. If we're getting ready to put a futures trade on, I wanna know how many days until that contract rolls over. Let's say that I'm looking for a swing trade and I'm looking to hold the trade for maybe a week, um, five days period of time, but the contract is is set to roll over in one day. Well, that would be good to know because at that point, I could just go ahead and trade the next month's contract. So that way I wouldn't have to worry about the rollover as I'm in the middle of that trade. Now, if it said rollover is gonna happen in six days, I plan to hold it for five, or I even plan to hold it for seven, at that point, I would probably still get in the current contract and then just roll it over towards the end if my you know take profit or stop loss had not been hit by that point. Now let's go ahead and put some conditional formatting in. And I use the conditional formatting in terms of for the net change and the percent change. So what we can do here is, well actually let me show you one more thing. If we wanna sort this by net change, you know which instrument is up the most for the day, I can click on this. Now when I click this, it's only gonna sort the ones in between these two label lines. So when I go here, it'll sort in between here. We'll not take what's below this label line and put it up here. So if we had other, um, futures or bond market contracts. Let me show you this a little bit, a little bit better. I'll go ZF, we'll go to um, ZF 06-22. All right, so now we have two bond future contracts too. Now watch when I hit net change. Now you can see, let's see, price. You can see right here, it only sorts these. It will not, 
you know, push these contracts up into the indices because I have a labeled row separating them. Okay. So that's why it's kind of important. Now, if these get out of whack and you're like, ah, that's not how I want them organized. I can just grab YM, put it up here, put the ES right there and grab the RTY. Boom, now I have them back in order how I wanted them. We can also make it to where it constantly, you know, will resort. I don't really use that feature, um, but you can have it to where it sorts according, you know, to price or other indicators that you may put in there or even net change or percent change. All right, so now let's go ahead and set up the conditional formatting. And the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna right click on here and we're gonna come back to columns. And what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna click on the cells that we wanna format. First one's gonna be net change. So I'm gonna click on net change. And we can see right here where we can go to conditions. We're gonna add a condition. Now, click right here and click add again. Now, for the background, we wanna go ahead and I'm gonna make this red. Let's see. Let's see if I can find red. All right, red. And uh, for the foreground, we're gonna keep that white. And trigger, well, the trigger, we want this to be greater than, and we're gonna put zero, all right? Now, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna click okay. Oh, and actually, we're gonna add one more. We're gonna go to another one, let's see. And what we're gonna do for this one is we're gonna make this one green. And you can make these whatever colors that, you know, best suit you, but I'm gonna make this as a green. And right there, green. And I'm gonna put, oops, green should be greater than, Go back on the red, the red should be less than. See, I'm talking and um, making a mistake. So I wanna do less than, um, less. All right, click OK and click Apply. Now you can see our cells are green and red. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for percent. And all I have to do here is click right here on the percent one, come right back over here to Cell, Add Condition. We're gonna add a condition and I'm gonna change this to red. Let's scroll down to red right there. And we're gonna say is less than zero. We're gonna add another condition. We're gonna make this green. Let me see. Come back up here a little bit and find green. And then we're gonna put is greater than, all right? Click okay. And I'm gonna click apply. Now you can see we have our cells conditionally formatted. So. If the market was up, meaning the ES or whatever instrument we're looking at, the cell is gonna be green and we can just quickly you know, look at it and visualize. Now, what I like to do a lot of times is, I'll just make the columns to however size you know, the words are a little bit. So you know, not one column is too far stretched out. I mean, that's just how I personally like it. But again, you can, you can drag this to however you wanna get the columns set up and you know the size. We can also you know, adjust the size of the window like this. So there's a lot of you know, customizations that you can do with Market Analyzer. All right, so as I was getting ready to edit the video, I left out one other thing we can do with this Market Analyzer window, which is a feature I don't really use. But if you watch a lot of different stocks or maybe you, you cover a, a lot more different uh, future markets than I do, then you can add indicators onto here. And for this example, I just added the RSI. Now again, if we wanna add RSI, you just come right over here and we go to columns. And then from columns, you go to indicators right down here. And then you, you would click the drop down window. You would kick, click the drop down window and then you would add RSI. And just keep in mind when you add RSI, if you're looking at a 14 period, you wanna make sure you load at least 14 days. I, I load an extra day on all of my indicators just to make sure that the data is going to be correct. But once we do that, let's say that you wanna sort by the RSI value, which one is the highest. When we see the NASDAQ has the highest, highest RSI value at 71, and the RTY has the lowest at 61.8. A lot of people like to use other indicators to find you know strength and weakness. Now, if you want this to automatically sort, you come right over here and you can put to auto sort right there and it will automatically sort you know the indicators as new data comes in so you can look on your watch list and see what's up you can also even even on here we can go back to columns and if you wanted to conditionally format that you could say rsi and we could put a format on it and we can put um well you can do a filter format too but we go um, add condition right here and let's say that we wanted it to be red if rsi was um was below and you can put let's say 
I will say, uh, you can do this either way. Let's say if it's below, um, less than, and I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna do less than 70, just to show you guys that it's, it'll, it'll format them red, right? So if we look over here, oh, all of them are red, except for the NASDAQ, because the NASDAQ's over 70. Now you can make this value, whatever value you would like, but again, this is just another feature in which you can use. It's not a feature that I use within the analyzer window, but I did want to make sure that I included it in this video, just in case it is a feature that you may want to use. But hopefully you guys found this video informative. I'll have a link in the right top hand, uh, right top hand corner of the screen, which will give you a whole playlist. I, continue, I want to continue to build this playlist so anybody that has questions regarding NinjaTrader, you guys can just click the link and go to the playlist. I'll also have the playlist linked in the description box down below. If you have any other questions about NinjaTrader, please leave it in the comment section down below because it can give me ideas for future videos. Because if you have a question, there's likely there's other traders out there with a similar question. Like always, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Till next time, good luck and good trading.